what I'd like to do with you today is talk about how we're addressing some of those changes in Dow, how some of our programs over the last couple of years have, uh, you know, have changed our company. Now, I'm sure that the, the pace of change and the speed of change in the global economy, you know, over the last couple of years has been on everybody's mind uh, in this room. Uh, and how to deal with that has been, you know, a, a big question for all of us. Uh, I'll put you back to a, a quote from Dr. Edward Deming. I'm, I'm sure that everyone's familiar with him, the leading quality guru of the 20th century. Uh, and Dr. Deming quoted, um, you know, it's not necessary to change because uh, survival is not mandatory. But uh, at Dow, we do consider survival mandatory and, and not only just surviving, but excelling. That means that we have to leave incremental change behind and we have to look for a, a way to truly transform our company. And throughout our 114 year history at Dow, uh, the leaders of our company have understood um, that it's critical to keep pace with the changing world. And as the world pace of change has accelerated, uh, so has Dow's efforts to transform uh, our company. About five years ago, we launched a transformational journey to, becoming earning, to become an earnings growth company. We accelerated that transformation with the acquisition of Roman Haas in 2009. Now, as you can imagine, the transformation has been felt in every corner of our company uh, and to a high degree in our manufacturing and engineering organization. And when you change a company this, to this degree, you not only change the products you make, you have to change how you make those products, uh, and you, you really have to focus on your people and the culture that you have on, uh, throughout the transformation. And what I would like to focus on today is how that change has played out in our company, especially in manufacturing and engineering, and especially in the Dow Advanced Materials Division, which has been at the heart of the transformation of Dow. The story starts with two great companies, Dow and Roman Haas, uh, two great companies with two very, very different cultures. And so the question that we were facing in 2009, you know, was how do you preserve and integrate two very strong companies with very distinct cultures, and how do you create a single company uh, with the power to lead in the marketplace? Well, Jack Welch said, speaking about change, he said, don't manage, lead the change before you have to. Well, increasingly, it was evident to us at Dow that the game was changing and that we could no longer win if we continued to do business as usual. When you can't change the external environment, you've really only got one choice left, and that's to change yourselves. And we knew that we had to do that, and we had to be proactive about it. We re repositioned the company geographically. Uh, we grew our presence in Asia, in Eastern Europe, in Latin America to seize on new market opportunities in these regions. We reshaped our business portfolios to place an increasingly emphasis on higher growth, more market-focused, more market technology-rich businesses. And today, with the acquisition of Roman Haas, two-thirds of our portfolio is made up of performance and market-driven businesses. Meanwhile, our basics businesses continue to be at the forefront in serving their customers around the globe. If we, uh, we look at a snapshot of Dow today, Dow serves customers in uh, over 160 countries uh, in many different markets, including high growth sectors such as electronics, water, energy, coatings, and agriculture, all of which we find pieces of in the Advanced Materials Division. Dow employs over 52,000 people, uh, and of that number, over 26,000 are engaged in our manufacturing and engineering organization. We're operating more than 700 assets, in more than 200 sites in uh, 37 countries around the world. We produce more than 5,000 products, and we manage more than 4,800 capital projects around the world each year. We also run 31 global technology centers as a company. Now you can see from this graphic how the manufacturing and engineering landscape has changed within Dow. Not only have our business models changed, but our client base also continues to diversify. M&E serves our Dow businesses, of course, but we also serve Dow clients, we serve Dow joint ventures, and within that mix of joint ventures, many, many mega projects. And all of that's led to tremendous diversification of our manufacturing capabilities, ranging from discrete manufacturing to complex batch operations to simple batch to continuous operations. Now at Dow, we've always had a mix of these different kind of business models, uh, with you know some that were uh, in, done in various ways, but we were always highly skewed toward the larger continuous type of production assets. 
With the addition of Roman Haas, however, uh, we reached a critical mass of products that require more specialized batch processing and discrete manufacturing. With more product variability comes the need for more flexibility in our operations. We needed plants that could be flexible enough to adjust to changes in demand uh, and also enable changes in product sourcing. As uh, many of you know, specialty businesses are, can be much more sensitive to supply chain changes uh, than our larger plants. Um, you know, the specialized plants don't always have multiple backups, uh, so a disruption anywhere in the supply chain uh, can become much more critical, much faster uh, than for plants that are producing in our basics businesses. We realized that to be successful, uh, we had to be operationally excellent across different business models uh, with tremendously varied product mix. We had to take what we'd learned in the past, both in Dow and in Roman Haas, and adapt it to the new reality. Now all of that sounds great, uh, but as you know, having a strategy to combine companies and executing that strategy can be two entirely different animals. So here's where we are in the, in the story so far. We are a transformed company, a transformed asset base with many more small sites than the company ever had before. Work processes and organizational models uh, that did a great job supporting our older business models but weren't necessarily what we needed to support the new company. Thousands of new employees representing two companies with two distinct and very different cultures, both built on successful hundred year histories of their own. And if that wasn't enough, challenging enough, uh, the global economy was in the tank at the time. So if you were reading a novel, this might be the point where it looks like everything is stacked against the hero, you know, the Corvette fixing to go over the cliff, and uh, we're wondering how is he going to pull this out and is he going to be able to succeed? Well, does this story have a happy ending? Well, yes, it does have a happy ending, and it's because of the heroes in our organization, the men and women who accepted this challenge and were given the tools, system, and skills uh, to succeed and to lead. And what I'd like to do now is to tell you uh, their story in my words and in theirs. As we started looking at the integration of Dow and Roman Haas, uh, we recognized the need to move forward with integrating the, the two M&E organizations, uh, but the approach was definitely going to, not going to be what maybe we had seen in the past, which was the Dow way or the highway. If you talk to many people who've come into Dow from other companies, uh, they said that Dow you know, definitely stood for do it our way, and uh, you know, they had the scars to prove it. So uh, we wanted to do things differently. So up front, we spent nearly eight months in preparing for the integration of our two uh, manufacturing organizations. Um, this started in uh, October of 2008, you know, months ahead of the, uh, the day one closing in, uh, on April 1st, 2009. The planning in, for this uh, effort involved about 150 people, 50% from Dow, 50% from Roman Haas. Uh, and it led to the development of a program that we called the Integrated Management System, or the IMS. As the leader of our Cartagena, uh, Columbia site said, you know, our IMS design was not imposed upon us. Its design was based on the best of the two companies. It included the work processes uh, from Dow and the 21st century manufacturing processes from Roman Haas, and its implementation has always respected the heritage of the Roman Haas culture. Not, I might add, you know, Dow's way or the highway. It was a true collaboration uh, noted for an openness on both sides to bringing in uh, each other's ideas and, and blending those into the ways that we do things. For the actual implementation, we borrowed a concept from Roman Haas that they were using uh, that we, they called an away team, home team uh, model. Uh, under this model, you have an away team which is comprised of subject matter experts drawn equally from both companies, uh, representing all four geographic regions. And these, uh, these away teams were trained to implement our new IMS system uh, and to do it both at the Heritage Roman Haas sites and at Heritage Dow sites, primarily within our uh, Advanced Materials Division. The away team would work with the home team and, and specifically a home team change leader who was responsible for managing and leading that change at a local level. Uh, the site home team owned the implementation, and they were responsible for sustaining the changes that they would see come about in their organization. Before the integration started in a particular site, uh, we had regional change management leaders uh, that provided three months of initial support, training, and coaching in getting the team ready. This was followed up by the away team uh, landing on the site, 
and spending 12 to 14 weeks of implementation, you know, led by one of the nine away teams. Uh, after the away team completed the process, uh, the regional change leaders would follow up with the home team to work and complete and sustain the implementation. So we developed one system that we used throughout the whole integration uh, that was able to give the individual sites, you know, their own framework uh, for, for making the changes that were necessary to get us to this, uh, this one culture across the, uh, across the company. Now, IMS was not just an implementation of systems and tools. Uh, we were also working very hard to create an empowered organization, a culture of empowerment that, that enabled everybody, uh, from the operators on the plant floor to the site leaders to the business leadership, uh, to take appropriate ownership and authorship you know, of the new, of the new uh, transformational story at Dow. And it's worth noting uh, that the Advanced Materials Division, you know, as a whole, rolled out the tagline, Empowered to Deliver. So it was a core tenet uh, you know, of our integration across not just manufacturing and engineering, uh, but across the entire businesses. Now, as many of you know, empowerment comes with responsibility. Uh, we recognized that the operational discipline that we needed uh, across our sites was not equal across our sites. And that if we wanted to reach the levels of safety performance, of reliability, of quality, uh, of customer service, energy efficiency, if we were going to hit these targets, uh, we really needed more uh, sustainable and more comparable discipline across our sites. And so we worked to do that through our IMS system. Uh, 